What is TWS Podcast uh, episode whatever? Who cares at this point? Bar. <laughs> the rants of the vindicated. It's my podcast. And I do what I want to. People, listen. Word is this the line? It's not word for me, Rich. Right, we gonna keep going. I know I changed my voice at work. Bars on the radio. What is TWS Podcast? Ready? I feel like the answer is there. And I'm watch, and I'm feeling so new school. Suicide attempts. How many tries to take? Damn, 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 All right, and uh, we are back. This is another episode of What Is TWS Podcast. Uh, another very special episode. Had to set the mood in the studio. Got the new lava lamp so I can make it, uh, what is it, funky sexy? Funky Sex- sexy. Sexy funky? Funky sexy. Funky sexy. Funky sexy. Yeah. yeah. All right. As you can hear, that is my wife, Hamps. We admit this is going to be another episode of... Uh, Evening with the Flans. Evening with the Flans. This is the Mother's Day edition. So, uh, happy Mother's Day to all all the mothers out there. Uh, happy belated Mother's Day. I guess we'll be releasing this the Monday after. So, it's a happy little Happy Mother's Day, everybody. But happy Mother's Day. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, in the background, you might you might hear that. We got some uh, exclusive music from Deuce Man Beats. It's my, uh, I don't know, I'm not going to hide. That's my brother-in-law. That's my brother Hamps. He's a producer. Hamps brother. He's a producer. Very talented. Uh, I can call him a young man because I got some time ass. on him. Yeah. Got I got eight some, years on him. I got some time on him. Very talented dude. And uh, he's going to be providing us with some some exclusives for the for the podcast. I talked to him this morning and he was upset <laughs> because there were plans made for our mother on Mother's Day. Uh huh. There are three boys. And he didn't know about the plans, but he was included on the plans. So yeah, my three brothers and my three cousins were going to take their mothers out for one big Mother's Day event. But nobody called my brother to say, hey, T, this is what we're doing. And he, he was... So you just expected him to be there? He was ready to start cussing folk out. Uh, I was he, cracking up. I mean, it's, uh, nah, I ain't going to tell his business. He got other Mother's Day stuff to worry about, though. I have a, a niece or nephew on the way. I think it's okay to say. Okay. All right. I mean, you know. Well, I hope so. Ooh. Well, I done <laughs> said it now. You done said it now. <laughs> it's out there in the world now. It's out there now. All right. But yeah, this is going to be our Mother's Day episode. <laughs> and the beginning, I hope, of uh, a more consistent uh, release schedule for Evening with the Flash. I, I'm having a ball, you know, recording these episodes with my wife. I hope she's enjoying it too. But uh, well, I maybe think. Well, a little late. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, we normally do this <laughs> after we put the baby to bed. So I like, guess uh that's why I gotta be funky sexy in here, right? I turn the lights off. I got the lava lamp with the wax that ain't melted yet. But Yeah, it looks a little weird. It's a little weird, but we getting there. Yeah, right, it's, so it's ten oh seven right now, so I am You gotta tell people the time. You just telling everything. I'm tired. I'm tired. You're just telling. I'm old and I'm tired. We had a Go on, old, feverish though. baby the last day. Yeah, so our Mother's Day wasn't the Mother's Day I think I had envisioned it being because baby was a little... I, I think we we think she's just teething, but, you know, cutting a lot of times teeth. cutting teeth, you know, comes with fevers and fussiness, so uh, it really wasn't in the cards for us today to be able to take her anywhere, so... So what did you envision? So, reserve, I mean, I wanted us to go have a, a, a family, you know, Mother's Day dinner, you know, go out. Had some food. You know, it was going to be, you know, majority of people in there celebrating Mother's Day. So it was going to be a nice little, you know. I think at Flanagan the local- family fun. We were going to run this morning. We were going to take her out in the running stroller. And we were going to do gonna that. have a family run. Probably go have breakfast. Come back home. You know, chill for a bit. You know, you were taking a nap. Taking oh. a nap. Got to see your gifts and all that stuff. You know. And I will admit, I will admit. You ordered it yesterday. Why you see? It's my story. First of all, it's my story. I just know you that well. You don't know nobody. I know that you ordered the gifts yesterday. You don't know nobody. You are the king of procrastination. Do all your Christmas shopping on Christmas Eve. I know you. You don't. You don't know nobody. I do. Anyway, go ahead. I mean, you know, it's just it's. I put a lot of thought into gifts, and and it, it sometimes can get very difficult to make a decision or. To, to decide on something or to figure out you know, what it is I'm going to 
I'm going to get you. I don't want it to be something I've gotten you before. I don't want it to be cookie cutter. I don't, you know, I don't like just doing the flowers for the sake of flowers. Even though, once again, I order flowers and it didn't show up. You going to start putting these companies on blast. I'm putting them on blast. It's 1-800-Flowers this time. I, it might have been 1-800-Flowers last time, but I think I'm done with 1-800-Flowers. You've been having issues with them. i having before. issues. So, so really, like, if there is a, a, a florist or if you know a florist, at, you can have shitty flowers at this point, but if I can depend on the shitty flowers being delivered when you say you're going to deliver them, I'll take that, right? I can't even get... At least then, my wife would have something. So I, if I said I ordered you flowers, she can be like, okay, these flowers are half dead, but you obviously did, <laughs> you know, order them for me. You The thought that counts. But I don't even have the thought that counts. I have to, like, show her an email. Like, look, I did. <laughs> look what I did. I did order them. Uh, the fact that they're not here... Didn't you order some from our anniversary too? And is that the one that like took like four days to get to you? They kept saying mm-hmm. they tried to deliver it and weren't trying. To, I don't know. So yeah, if you know a florist or anything like that, that I'm just looking for punctuality at this point. If the flowers will actually show up, uh, then that's what that'll they'll be my new florist, and I'll uh, I'll hype them on the uh, on the podcast too. I'm just looking for reliability. Why well, I can't order something and it actually show up? You might gotta look into fry tags, F R E Y T H E. Are you giving me suggestions now? No, I'm just saying. I'm flowers s- from? <laughs> okay, all right. That wasn't very subtle. It wasn't subtle at all. But I just seen them around often, and they have nice flowers, from what I, I hear. I think that's why I have this like all of a sudden addiction to uh, Prime Now, because I every time I order something on Prime Now, and they say it's gonna be here between this time and this time, you know what? It's there. I get it. You just don't want to go out to the store. I don't. I don't want to talk to people. I don't want to see people. I'm sorry, folks. Uh, I don't like most human beings. I live with the few human beings that I do enjoy uh, spending time with, and even they get on my nerves. I like but shopping. I, I don't. I, I, like I like shopping. Going, I like going to the store. On the internet, I like going to the store so that I can have it. Like I don't have to like order it and order it, order it, so that I don't, I don't what, have to order many, it. How many order? Uh, and then uh, wait for it to get here. What did you say? Or- ordered? I already made a joke, Tammy. You don't have to try to. I was just like, trying to confirm. You trying to confirm? Okay. Because I wasn't really oh, paying attention. Oh, word. Oh, you're not paying attention, and we are only two people in the room. Okay. Word, well, word. I was replying to this comment on Facebook. It's like no lights in here, it's no TV on, but you on your phone. Okay. Word. Word. I had to reply to a comment. Yeah, word. I know you did. I feel you. I understand. Into ways. Uh, yeah, I love Prime now. All right, so before we get into more uh, happy times, uh, I got I, as usual, I got to get my evil out. As y'all know, I, I just, I have negative feelings about so many things. <laughs> it's important for me to be able to express myself. So um, I, for one, am glad that Mother's Day is over. <laughs> um, Damn. I know that sounds bad. That but sounds horrible. It sounds bad. It sounds bad. But the reason I'm glad that it's over, because I'm, I'm documenting this day. I'm taking notes, and I'm keeping track of, of everything that was done this day. What The text messages that were sent, the cards received, what the daycare did, what I did, what the outside world did. Because in a month from now, when Father's Day comes, I'm going to prove to all of y'all how much of a bullshit Father's Day, Father's Day actually is. Because watch Father's Day come, and it means nothing to any of you. Like, Father's just, Day is not a bullshit it's holiday. It's a bullshit holiday and we're going to prove it. We're going to prove it. Just, just understand that I've been taking note of everything that you and mothers, don't get me wrong, you deserve everything. Everything that you get from Mother's Day. Being a mother, I, you you heard me in there. I just had to uh, uh, get the stern daddy voice with Elise a little while ago because she mm-hmm. told mommy to stop and I had to explain to Elise, you know, what mommy has already done for her, you know, 10 months of of pregnancy, which included, you know, back pain, back pain foot nausea, pain, foot pain, sciatic nerve uh, issues, brittle hair, brittle nails, skin edges, issues, all kinds knee. of stuff. Yeah. Then the actual labor and delivery. Oh. And then now like 18 months of sleepless nights. And uh, is she going to tell me to stop it? Are you going to tell you to stop? She's going to point her little tiny old finger at me and tell That's me right. to stop My it? bad. My bad, folks. I didn't mean that. Open the door, but I did. But yeah, so, so I I she's believe. So tiny. How's she gonna tell me to stop? She did. You raised her. 
I ain't had nothing to do with it. I was playing Mario Kart. But um oh. But yeah, mothers, you deserve everything that you get. Um, you know, I'm glad that you have your day. Uh happy Mother's Day to my mother, amazing woman. I just want y'all to know that in a month, you're gonna see a very different reaction uh for Father's Day. So with that said, we're gonna move on. That's Flan's moment of hate. It's not gonna I be. I got that it out. Well, we go, all right, we're gonna see though. You got a gift we last gonna... year from the daycare. We want to don't get me started on them on them fifteen M and M's they gave me last <laughs> year. <laughs> Tammy, they didn't even, they didn't even give me a regular size bag of M and M's. Tammy, they gave me the the snack size <laughs> bag of M and M's and a, like and a and, and a fake tie. Like making fun of the fact that daddies get the worst gifts of all time on Father's Day. They gave me a cardboard tie and fifteen M and M's. It you, was a glitter tie. Oh oh I yeah, know. because that makes it better. And they signed it, Love Elise. Yeah, yeah. You got handprints and two cards and Starbucks gift cards and everything. It's probably for five dollars. Okay, and for I'm a sh- cup of coffee. and that. Ba- and how much do you think they spent on that bag of M and M's? Time. First of all, they didn't buy that bag of M and M's. They bought they bought they a bought big a bag, bag yes. <laughs> of fifteen M and M packs of M and M's and gave me one. That, that's let's make that clear. All right. So and I don't want to take a, I don't want to take any shine away from Mother's Day. So I'm, we're gonna stop talking about the bullshittedness of uh, <laughs> of Father's Day, and we're gonna move on to the, the glory and beauty and pageantry of uh, of Mother's Day. Pageantry. Pageantry. Yeah. So okay, so we talked about the fact that yes, Mother's Day got away from me, and uh, I kept saying, you know, gotta get something, gotta get something, gotta get something, gotta get something, but really couldn't. Uh, couldn't decide on what to get, but I still think you know, I still think that I'm a, uh, I'm an attentive and thoughtful person. So when it did come down to crunch time, and my options was limited, I think I picked. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think I did. Still, like I I went and I picked good items that show that I pay attention to the things that you like and the people that you like and your hobbies. And things you care about, and I even and the presentation even worked out. I bought a bag to put the stuff in, and then realized the stuff I bought was like way too big for the bag, so I couldn't put it in the bag. But I snuck upstairs. When did you sneak upstairs? I was downstairs. Flan moves in mysterious ways. Please, you don't move that fast. I, but, but I move. That's the point. I snuck upstairs. I like arranged the stuff, you know, on our on our dresser. So it so. She when she finally found it, she had to deal with the realization that it had been there, like in the room, and she had had no idea that it was there. I kept walking by it. As you had walked by it several times, so it just made it that much more. I thought that was a pretty cool idea for and I was like asleep in the bed with the baby when she found the stuff, and I happened. I don't know how I just happened to wake up and like look over and see you discovering it, and I was like, yeah. Maybe because when I finally did discover it, it was a little bit lighter in the room. It was dark. When we came, got in the bed with the baby, so I wasn't really paying attention. And then when I finally did see it, it was eight o'clock. But I think I did a good. I think I did. A, I think I did a good job of picking out some stuff that that would mean something to you. It wasn't uber expensive, but it was. Uh, it was specific to you and your your momness and some things you need to be a distraction from. I got you books. I'm not, let's not pretend like I'm, I'm not going to talk, like I'm not going to say what we got, what I got you, but I got you books. The Girl on the Train. The Girl on the Train, because you, you like reading those chick flick books. This I know about. It's a chick flick. Is that a chick flick? It's a chick flick. This is Tammy. It's a chick flick. It's a suspense. Have you heard any dudes talk? It doesn't matter that it's a suspense film. Mm. If it's a suspense film about like a man cheating on his wife or whatever, if it's a suspense film about a girl on the train, dudes don't want to see it. It's a chick flick. Fine. The name of the book is The Girl on the Train. Does Fine. that sound like a movie I want to go see? Why wouldn't it? It's The Girl on the Train? What was that other girl movie that you want that you saw? With a dragon tattoo? Let's not get into why I saw that. Let's not get into that. Mm-hmm. It had nothing to do with me wanting to see The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Oh, so it's some other girl... That wants you to see the girl with the dragon tattoo. Anyways, back to what uh, uh-huh. 
Back mm-hmm. to your gift. I got you that. And I, I know you like uh, Ina Garden. Ina. Whatever. Ina Garden, the Barefoot Contessa. Barefoot Contessa. Food Network. So that benefits us all. Got you one of her <laughs> cookbooks, you know. And then uh, like a food science book. That's like a textbook. I think it's huge. But you like textbooks. Well. About well. topics that you have some interest in. And I think you have an interest in cooking. I do have an interest in cooking. I just wish I had more time to. You be talking to people like, what kind of vegetables should I bring? Oh, girl, you should just uh, blanch some, uh, some green, green beans. beans and then toss them in some olive oil, garlic, and uh, almond slivers. And you got something, you know, you be throwing it out there like Chef Boy RD or something. I did suggest a kale salad as well. Kale salad. Oh, man. More rabbit food. But Jessie, she, she was good on her. Jessie. Have we found Jessie and Man yet? No. No, right. there, there's a potential person, there's but potential. we're not sure yet. Okay. So, I mean, we're working on it. He still got to pass. He still got to put his application in. He still got to put his application in. I haven't been invited in. to Steiner Ranch yet. Well, we'll see if he's going to show up to her housewarming party. Yeah. Because she has a brand new house. Got to get the music going again for the, for the new dude, for the new suitor. Yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I don't know. Can't trust brand new folk all right so this was officially your third mother's day mm-hmm. as we, we celebrated mother's day while you're pregnant because mm-hmm. i feel like at that point you're already your mother you're already making sacrifices you know for a child whether they're in or outside of the womb so you're a mom yeah i think i was like seven weeks pregnant though it was really early seven or eight but you, i mean we were we were already you were already not getting uh perms not getting your hair relaxed nope so that's a huge sacrifice. I think the nausea had set in by then. The nausea had set in. So you was already a mom. And then last year was the official, like, the Earth. baby's here. Mm-hmm. And I think we went to Estancia, and that was... But we had her with us. At Estancia. At Estancia. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of rough. Because she started her crying phase. Yeah. yeah. And so I think we anticipated, we saw, like, this this isn't going to go well. She's, she's teething. She's not feeling well. This isn't going to go well. We're going to cancel the reservation. We're going to stay home. And we had pizza and cheesecake. That is... That was an awesome dinner. Awesome dinner. I think it's, it still worked. I mean, so how do you feel about your third Mother's Day? You know, I I think that we did probably what I needed to do was to just to relax for the day. Mm-hmm. You know, we haven't had days where we can just be in the house and just be and... Not even, because I don't think that we really rested, but we were just home. Because we're never home. We're always running, 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 doing something. There's always something to do. So, we didn't really want to do this, but it's probably what we needed to do. It was a nice change of pace. Nice change of pace. Nice change of pace. And I did, I guess I got to do some thinking about how I feel as a mother. And, you know, there were some, there's some things that I just didn't expect you know I I have experience with kids so I'm not a newbie but it's just it's still way harder than I anticipated so what what are the things that that surprised you about motherhood so far how tired you are yeah I knew I was going to be tired I knew it I anticipated it I knew there was going to be some sleepless nights but I didn't anticipate even after me getting a seven hour night of sleep, which is a new thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still exhausted. It's like I have to, it's like I have a sleep deficit that I have to catch up on. Yes, this is true. I'm always going to be in deficit, it seems like. And I'm, so I'm always tired. You know what caught me off guard that I had to thank my mother for when I, uh, when I talked to her today to wish her a happy Mother's Day hmm. was um, the thing I hadn't thought about was, you know, a couple, Maybe a month ago when we all went through that rash of illness where mm-hmm. the, she got sick and you got sick and then I got sick. Stomach viruses. Stomach viruses and all of that. It's like she got sick, so we had to take time off to stay home and take care of her. Mm-hmm. And then that meant that when we eventually got what she had, we couldn't stay home because we had already spent oh, yeah. our sick time 
taking care of her. So not only did we not get rest on the days we did take off, but now when we're actually sick, we have to go to work anyway because we don't have time to, you know, and thinking of my mom and her being a, you know, a single mother with two kids that that probably happened to her all the time when she had to take care of two sick kids or, you know, stay home and, and, and not have any rest and, and have a full day, even on a day that she didn't go to work. Mm-hmm. And then when she actually was sick and needed, you know, needed some help, needed some time, time off to take care of herself. She couldn't, she still had to go to work and she was a teacher. So guess what? She had to go to work and take care of some more kids. Mm. So yeah, shout out to moms. Like I, I had, you know, at, there are these things that you always, that I keep running into as a new parent and you realize, wow, like my mom had to do all that. Shout out to single moms because I don't single know, moms, yeah. I don't know what oh, I would do. Tammy, give a shout out. I don't know what, I think that, I think that moms with multiple kids and moms who are doing it by themselves are just on a whole different level of superwoman that I haven't experienced yet. I know that I do a lot for this child. I do a lot for this household, and I do a lot for Elise, but it's just one child. Yeah. There are women out there. One of my girlfriends is on her fifth child. How is she doing this? I have no idea. And she has those little babies without epidural. I, I don't know how she's doing this. I don't know how she... All right, we, we losing the funky sexy. We're talking I'm, about epidural. I'm sorry. But <laughs> no, that's, no, no. It's just amazing to me how women, you know, are having... Having multiple babies and without drugs. I was first in line when we checked in. Hey, sign me up immediately. Give me all the drugs that you have. Yeah. Hmm. It, it's, just, it's crazy how, like, we didn't think about... Because I don't even think we thought about the effect that the epidural would have on the baby. No. And so we're in the hospital. Like, we got the greatest baby The best of baby all in time. the world. She, she never cries. Cry. They like pricking her to get blood and all kinds of stuff. And she's just like, whatever, man. We didn't realize. That's all you got? She was drugged up the whole time. <laughs> she was on a high. She was on a morphine kick. She was on a morphine kick. Poor baby. Poor. No, actually, it's probably good for her. It was poor she, us. Because we she got was getting pricked and stuff. She ain't feel it. She ain't didn't care. It. But we got used to it while we had the help. Thinking she was just all cool and then brought her home to just the two of us and mm. them drugs wore off. Mm. And we got introduced to the real baby. Mm. That was just not even fair. Yeah. But again, shout out to all mothers and don't sell yourself short, sweetheart. Just, you know, just because we got the one and you got me, Wonder Dad, uh, <laughs> you still you still have quite a job. I, I don't know how you do it. Wonder Dad? I, I, I'm like the greatest dad of all time. Okay. I'm up there. I'm up there. And I'm still going to have a bullshit father's day. I'm just letting y'all know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> so now you're putting the pressure on me to try to prove you wrong. I'm really not. Because I'm telling you that it's just not It's not designed for that. The day is not designed. You know, the day was never intended to be anything. And I just I almost wish they would get rid of the holiday rather than, you know, get you a bullshit one. They're not going to do that. That's they not could. fair. They could. There are decent dads out there that need to be recognized the same way moms need to be recognized. And you can attest that there are just as many deadbeat moms as there are deadbeat dads. I can. So there's yeah. no reason why there shouldn't be an acknowledgement for both. I did do, I did put in some time at the uh, Office of Child Support Enforcement. So I do know that there's some deadbeat moms. So let's talk about those deadbeat moms. Because that, you know, like... I'll be honest, you know, like, when I found out that you were pregnant and we were having a child, like, like for a for the dad that's not like carrying a child and is, is is not like every day, every moment experiencing, you know, this future parenthood coming. Like mm-hmm. our experience is coming through you, mm-hmm. you know, like it's it's only whatever whatever we have to deal with with you mm-hmm. that. Uh, that we actually experience. So, you know, you don't, it doesn't sink in. There's no connection. There's no real connection, you know, until, you know, the baby's actually here. And even then, you know, Elise spent the majority of her time with you and it was kind of more my job to take care of you and to, you know, fill in, do the stuff around the house needed to be done. It's still like the majority of the taking care of the baby, you know. Mm-hmm. 
um, was with you. So, you know, I can, not that I can understand how dads don't have that connection and, and therefore would be more apt to be not present because, mm-hmm. you know, you don't have that, that feeling. But it just makes me not be able to understand dead being mothers that much more. Like, you know, like you had, like, I remember going to the hospital with you mm-hmm. for our um, our tour, hospital tour. Mm-hmm. And how you just being at the tour, in the, you know, us taking the tour and you realizing that, you know, uh, soon the baby is no longer going to be in your womb and going to be out. And you just like breaking down, crying. They used the word separation. Separation. Because you felt like you could protect her so much more while you still were carrying her. And the fact mm-hmm. that she had to come out and like be exposed to all this stuff like that, that just broke your heart. Mm-hmm. And it was difficult for me to relate to that. It's like, you know, how... For someone that, you know, for a woman that carries that child and, and has that sort of a, a connection, and then when the child is no longer, you know, inside of them, they can walk away. How do they not have that connection? How do they not have that connection? Yeah. Now, I mean, I can understand, like, putting your child up for adoption. You're making the ultimate sacrifice because you know you don't have the resources or not in the, you know, not in the right place to raise a child. But the, just the whole idea of the deadbeat mother which I saw a lot in uh, child support enforcement that like it's, it's heartbreaking it is heartbreaking, it's heartbreaking. I, I mean I know that every mon- every mother goes through their own situation there's some mothers that experience postpartum depression and really can't connect because they have their own mental issues to deal with there are mothers out there that were on drugs or have other issues that they need to work on themselves and it kind of disconnects them from everybody let alone their their child yeah i mean they're just they're just some things that i'm never going to understand you know so it's just i I just don't get it but again it just goes to show how much we need to appreciate mothers that are mothers because it's it's the most amazing thing in the world to be able to you know create a life nurture that life bring it into the world and and raise it, you know. It's amazing. It's, an it's am- amazing. I love being a mom. It's an amazing experience. I love looking back at old pictures of me and seeing Elise in those old pictures. Yeah. You know, she doesn't even know how much she looks like me. I don't realize it until I see old pictures and can see how much she looks like me. It's amazing having a little person that is... A little person. A little you, yeah. you know. Well, sweetheart, I could, you know, like I said... Uh uh-huh. I said in your car, the only thing as good as having you as a wife is is having you as the mother of my child. I think you're you're doing an amazing job. You're an amazing woman, and I do appreciate you. So, once again, happy Mother's Day, happy third Mother's Day. Thank you. Hamps. I appreciate. Oh, I appreciate you. <laughs> had to just had to throw on the hands. Yes. I was right. actually smiling for a second, then you said, you hey. still, it's, a, it's a term of endearment. Yes. All right, so we're going to get into some things that I think are going to be like recurring uh, segments on the evening with the flans. The funky sex of time. Uh, <laughs> just get into the funky. Grossest parts of being a parent. Oof. So we had another gross episode today during, as a part of our Mother's Day family fun day. So uh, I didn't do breakfast in bed. Well, I did breakfast in bed. I just didn't cook the breakfast in bed. That's fine. Don't even matter to me. We were up in the middle of the night because, you know, Elise was up crying and teething, whatever, you know, her fever and stuff at like 5 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a rough night. So I didn't do breakfast in bed, but I did get up and order breakfast. So order breakfast. We're sitting in the the bed. We're all eating our, our, our breakfasts. And uh, Elise didn't want to have anything to do with me. When she's not feeling well, like, Daddy is not not the move. Like, Daddy, I, I, I know you. I love you. I see you over there. Uh, but, uh... But, nah. You you stay over there. You provide the breakfast. But me and Mommy are going to sit here and eat. So, t- you know, Elise decided to contribute to your birthday gift by adding a little extra seasoning to your breakfast this morning. Yes. Oh, goodness. You it go was- ahead. Go ahead and describe it. Yeah, she's sitting in my lap. She's eating her bean and cheese taco. Bean and cheese taco. That's yeah. gross. It's delicious, and she loves it. I had my migas with my tortillas, and then all of a sudden, she sneezes. Just 
oh. and just oh my gosh just just slob and snot and I can't even imagine what else food that was in her mouth just get sprayed everywhere all over my food yeah. you still ate it did you notice any change in uh flavor <laughs> <laughs> no I did not but I know that I had to eat that food I was hungry he was hungry I had to eat it so that's that that's that mom it's gross that it's mom life so gross I cannot believe that she did that and then she just looks at me like look yeah what you think was gonna happen right are you gonna feed me or what right. can we get back to eating it happened it happened you get, get over, over it, it? yeah <laughs> that's the, I think that's that's like uh the recurring theme in parenthood all right it happened and get over it get over it what are we doing next keep on moving did i get a text message can i check my phone while we doing that episode? i guess so i can talk about something else gross that happened i'm trying to think I, I don't even remember when it was but she had a runny nose probably messing with allergies or something and so i'm reaching for a kleenex to wipe her nose and at, in that very moment, she decided she wanted to be close to mommy and she wanted to give me a kiss. So she just gets right in my face, gives me a kiss on my mouth, and it's just snot all over Aww. my mouth. See, I don't get the I don't get those moments. It's gross. I don't get the I don't like get she the, couldn't have waited one I feel second. So I was left out. the tissue was right in my reach, and I was grabbing it and coming back in it was happening in slow motion so as i'm coming in she's reaching for me mommy and i couldn't <laughs> <laughs> i couldn't get the Train. tissue <laughs> i could not get the tissue in there fast enough it was disgusting oh just nasty and i just had to endure it yeah, you just had to enter. I mean, I wish I could. I wish I could take it. I wish I could take some of that burden from you, but she don't want. She, you know. There's she, so many things that she does to me on a she regular basis. That stuff for me. On a regular basis. See how left out I am. It's hard right, though. I'm not complaining. Ugh. I love being dead. <sighs> she going Well, she does gross things to you all the time. Like yeah. she vomits on you and you alone. So. I wish all the bad things in life happen to you and you alone. Like, yeah, it, I don't know. It's the baby. It's, it's right now. It's still baby vibe. That last, that last stomach virus was that, a little, was a little was, worse. Cause that was like, that was food. That was like straight, like chunks of sweet potatoes stuff. Yeah. Right? But it was still like sweet potato. Like, I don't know what's going to happen when she started like eating chili or something. And, <laughs> <laughs> like, that's a different, that's a different kind of vomit. Hopefully by then she, we can get her to go to the bathroom or get her to have a little bucket or something. So, like, you know, we're going to have to work something out. Got to control that. All right. So, we're going to make the smoothest segue of all time. We're going to go from talking about vomit to national food holiday. Yes. <laughs> national food holiday. So, today, Mother's Day is buttermilk biscuit day, in case you didn't know. We didn't have any buttermilk. I didn't check this. I didn't this. know that it was buttermilk I, biscuit day. That's on me. It was Mother's Day. You shouldn't have, you shouldn't have the burden of having to keep track of this stuff. I should have known it was a buttermilk biscuit day, and somehow worked buttermilk biscuits into the day. I didn't do it. You so, could have uh, had some Pillsbury I biscuits. Nah, I don't know. No. Nah. I think we? if we were going to do the buttermilk biscuits, I really like the biscuits at Kirby Lane. Like I think we would have had to go out. Those, those Kirby Lane biscuits are uh, pretty freaking awesome. They are good. Shout out to Kirby Lane. Kirby but Lane. tomorrow, the 15th, the day that we are releasing this episode. So when you hear this episode, it will be Chocolate Chip Day. Mm-hmm. Chocolate Chip Cookie Day no, or Chocolate Chip Day? Just Chocolate Chip Day. What do you do with just plain old chocolate chips I don't know. without putting do them do in cookies? Well, I, get, I mean, that's the most... I mean, you can put chocolate chips in brownies. I, I don't like chocolate chips in brownies. That, those, that pack of brownies we have yeah, in there. they kitchen. got chocolate and, I, and it bothers me. Why I don't like that. I like, I want my, I want my brownies to just be like chewy and fudgy and it's I don't want that little, little surprise I don't want chocolate. that little, yeah, I don't want that little like. Who doesn't want a surprise texture. of chocolate? Nah, it, it's a brownie. It's already chocolate. I don't need like the. You don't little, want an extra surprise little chunk. Of chocolate? Yeah, I don't like like chocolate chunk cookies. I don't like my brownies with chocolate chips in them just i want oh my gosh who doesn't like more chocolate i'm just who doesn't like me Tammy? i don't like you can call me weird if you want to but uh, i don't like 
I told you, I had the idea way back for the Stuff Without the Stuff store. Uh -huh. So for those of you that don't know me, I wanted to open a store called Stuff Without the Stuff. And it was basically going to be uh, Stuff Without the Stuff. Like, I really only had two things I was going to say. <laughs> yes. It was the only two things I could think of so far. So I like chocolate chip cookies. But my favorite part of the chocolate chip cookie is the cookie part. I like more cookie than chocolate chips. Like, so you I think, wanted to have the chocolate chip flavor, but not the actual chocolate chips. Is that I, what happened? I wanted the chocolate chip cookie with no chocolate chips in it. And I think a lot to a lot of people, that's a snickerdoodle or a, a sugar, sugar cookie. cookie. And I'm trying to say that there's a difference. I don't, I don't bake enough to know like the difference, but I've had sugar cookies and then I've had chocolate chip cookies. And the cookie part in a chocolate chip cookie is different than the sugar cookie. I'm I swear to God and it's I, different. I get that, but it's only because the chocolate chips are added See, in there. I don't believe that. I believe it. I don't believe it. I, I really need to, I just need to have this experiment take place so we can get this settled once and for all. I believe that there is a difference between chocolate chip cookies with no chocolate chips than there is between than there is with just like straight sugar cookies. And that is really the number one thing I wanted to have in my stuff without stuff store. I think the other one was like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches without so, the without the without what? The jelly. So then it was just so it's peanut, a peanut butter, butter sandwich? sandwich? I it's a bad idea. I, I don't the store doesn't exist, obviously. I didn't <laughs> pursue it. Okay. I'm just saying peanut I had this idea. Sandwich? And it started with the chocolate chip cookies without the chocolate chips because i really like my so my favorite some of my favorite chocolate chip cookies are the ones from sprouts uh -huh. and i think when you get those they have the appropriate amount of chocolate chips so i can get a bite <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't always have a chocolate chip same thing with uh amy's not amy's uh tiff streets tiff streets tiff streets have the appropriate amount of chocolate chips in. and uh -huh. there is a distinct difference to me between the cookie part of the uh, Tiff Treats chocolate chip cookie and their sugar cookies. There's it's like a different cookie. I think there's something. It's 100 different cookie. There's something that they're adding in there that um, is giving it a different flavor. Right. Well, I'm saying this: if there is a bakery out there, this is, I'm giving away a million dollars ideas out, out here today. All right? If there's a bakery out there, if you could just take your chocolate chip. Cook, could I, 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 whenever I see recipes for it, you pretty much make the dough and then you add chocolate chips. I'm just saying, don't add the chocolate chips. Bake those up. Send I them to me. I'm researching this. Boom. We in it. We can call them flans cookies or, or flan cakes. I don't care what you want to call them. Let's work this out. Flan man. cakes? Okay, not flan cakes. We, we, we spitballing here, babe. It's not a complete finished idea. You got to uh -huh. help me. You got to help me uh, work it out. Uh-huh. I thought flan cakes were your pancakes. You see how you try to be literal, right? I'm just uh, saying, I'm just throwing it out there right now. Just so it, it looks there. like the sugar cookie. Uh -huh. I'm just looking at Betty Crocker right here. Okay, okay. The sugar cookie is including almond extract. Mm-hmm. The chocolate chip cookie does not include that. Does not. But everything else is about the same. Mm, nope. There's nope. some cream of tartar too. In what? The, the sugar, sugar cookie. cookie. And the chocolate chip cookie, there is not. Cream of tartar. So uh, please don't put cream of tartar in anything you give me. I just don't want it. I you don't, don't even know what it is. I don't you have to have I, it. I don't know. I don't want to know what it is. I'm I'm telling people how to make me happy. Father's Day is coming up. <laughs> right. I mean, you don't even have to. You don't even know what people use in their recipes for cook for okay. cookies. But I'm telling you that don't use the cream of tartar. But you don't even know what it is or what it's for. So. So. Why well, I say it. don't use it? Because I'm saying because that's because you know, just just because it sounds nasty. Because it sounds nasty. That's the only reason why. That is exactly. But if right. someone used it, you would not be able to tell if they use it or not. It's possible. It's not. It's possible. Possible. It's I mean, all this all these years, I've been touting the fact that there's a difference between chocolate chip cookies and sugar cookies, and now comes to find out one of the differences is this cream of tartar. So maybe I do have a. a, a uh, advanced enough palate to be able to pick out cream of tartar and, and cookie. You don't know, Tim. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so that cream of tartar is definitely not included in the chocolate chip recipe. Exactly. And the almond extract is not included as well. Hey, million dollar ideas, people. Send me the first batch. 
We can work out some marketing stuff. Let's do it. All right. That's a million dollar idea? I'm sorry. Pick a side, Tammy. I, I picked. Pick, pick I a picked. side. Pick a side. I'm trying to do this for us. I picked a long time ago. For us. I just have to, you, you know, ask the questions. For sometimes. us, man. Man. All right. I just don't know if it's a million dollar idea. It might be a good idea. I don't know if it's a million you, dollar you, idea. What's your idea, Tammy? I ain't got no idea. Exactly. Okay. Look, because my now. idea right now is trying to figure out what I'm going to go to bed and what I'm wearing tomorrow to go to work because I'm tired. You what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, whatever, whatever, whatever. All right. So, next topic. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are you listening to these days? What is what is now? First of all, people understand. Tammy would have no taste in music if it wasn't for me. Are you serious? No taste at all. So I guarantee you, whatever she's listening to right now is either a derivative of something I introduced her to, or something I introduced her to. Let's find out what it, what it is. All right, fine. So Eric Robeson has a bow. <laughs> Man, points just keep adding up. Eric Roberson has a new EP that's just released uh-huh. about a week or two ago. Ero. So I've been E-ro. checking that out. I haven't really listened to it that much. I need to like actually play it and play it start to finish. It's seven songs on there. And he's going to release two more this year as well. Okay. So I, I need to check that out. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. But before that came out, I was listening to Solange's album. Right, recently that's, that's an original thought i'll give you that one and that actually i'm surprised at how much i like that album i can listen to that album from start to finish and just groove with it all day and and be happy with it she has a few songs on there that i actually like but the whole album is just chill you can just, just chill. yes just chill i can't even remember the name of the album but it's her it's definitely her most down. recent album that's what I want. Is it a seat at the table? What? Is the name of the album a seat at the table? Nah, nah I'm, listen, I'm looking for it right now. All I right, don't well, know. Let's see. What I'm listening to these days, uh, I think I, I went through that little bit of uh, feeling down and a little, you know, I think I talked about it on Facebook, the whole dealing with depression and all that kind of stuff. So actually what I'm listening to right now. Yes, seat at the table. I'm sorry. sorry. I'm too good. <laughs> the points just keep adding up, folks. Um, but yeah, what I've been listening to recently is uh, Talib's album, Gravitas. He's got a new album? No, this is not a new album. This okay. is maybe uh, an album or two back. Mm-hmm. But uh, it has the, the intro to the album is a song called, or a track called Inner Monologue. And it, it just talks about, it's, it's a person, I guess, giving almost like a um, motivational speech. But, but talking about how, you know, uh, artists... You know, have the unique ability uh, to create art. So when you end up in those situations where you're down, when things don't go your way, uh, you know, mm-hmm. life has got you down. Uh, that's the perfect time to hmm. make art, to create art. Okay. And so, I mean, that's kind of what I'm trying to do with these with these podcasts and all these things to be very, you know, very personal, very open. Mm-hmm. And uh, and yeah, I share everything on these things. This this is my art form right now. You know, I did the music thing for a while, but uh, this is my art form now. Like trying to entertain people with the bullshit that I go through. <laughs> so, man, that's what I'm listening to. That's that's kind of what's getting me through these days. But okay. yeah, we uh okay. we're coming up on time, so let's 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 see. Let's let's close out with. Uh, I think we were gonna try to do like a current events type segment. So I don't know. I, I'm a, okay. I'm gonna broach the topic, and then if you don't feel comfortable with us continuing or going any further with it, we don't have to. Mm-hmm. But uh, my wife and I, you know, I because I, I think people don't talk about this enough. I think to keep to to keep a marriage going in the right direction, you need help mm-hmm. sometimes, and mm-hmm. it's and it's okay to to reach out and seek help. So my wife and I, and this is not the first time that we've done it, but we uh, we're seeing a, a couple's therapist. Mm-hmm. Is that what you call it? Couples counselor, yeah. Couples counselor. Couples therapist, same uh, thing. Yeah. So we had our what our second visit with her mm-hmm. this Saturday, Saturday before Mother's Day. And uh, I think I think we shocked. I think she was not, right? Because the first visit was it was kind of tame, and you know we got our homework, <laughs> and we went home and we did this. We did the homework, and then we came in there this Saturday, and uh, I think she got real. We, we was going in. We was going in. We was going in. And she was not ready. I think she was not prepared for all for, that we had to say. Yeah, because she. I mean, we talked about how I get passionate and loud, and I talk with my hands in the. Uh, in the session before 
but she didn't actually see it happen. No. And then we went in there this time, and I got passionate, and I got and loud, was with and hands. I was talking with my hand. And it's a small room, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if she felt threatened for a second there. Like, what, what was I about to do? Mm-hmm. Which always takes me, catches me off guard, because I am not a big, imposing figure. I may sound like it sometimes when I get to going, but if you can see, I can see like if you couldn't see me and all you could do was hear my voice, how you might get intimidated. Mm-hmm. But if you looking dead at me, mm-hmm. <laughs> and like, like really, like really, what you gonna do, dog? Like really? Yeah. But I think, yeah, I think we got. Her. I think we caught her off guard. We and then we it. had to like back it down a little bit. Make and, her uh, make her laugh. And we had to make her laugh. So we had to, we had we gave her a little evening with flans, <laughs> sort of <laughs> evening with the flans. She had her little snippet. personal. Yeah, she got a little personal live show. You guys are funny. We are. We are. We are. Yeah, we just wanted, we needed to make you feel better because you look scared to the most. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't want you to call the police. We in Texas. I just, I just wanted, I didn't want you to call the police. Yeah. But it was a good session. I think we're getting some good stuff out we're of it. Getting some good feedback from her, some good ideas from her. She's a, she's really. Yeah, she's much better than the last guy we went to. Yeah, but I think it's important for, for couples to do a check in every once in a while and, yeah. you know. Things aren't always going to be rainbows and sunshine yeah. and flowers. And it's nothing. It's it's worse to have issues and not deal, not with, deal them. with them than it is to admit that you have issues. Like, if you have issues, just go deal with them. Don't deal with like them. Like, this is us choosing to stay together. If we didn't want to be with each other, then we wouldn't deal with it. We just like, you know what? part ways. I almost cussed right there. Go on. Who's stopping you? <laughs> Look, sometimes your mama listens to this thing. I can't be cussing like My that. mama know I cuss. My mama know I say all the motherfucking cuss words. See, Damn, there you go. That's time. just awful. She know I do. I know. I remember the first time. I remember the first time I cussed in front of my mother. And, uh, was, I was it over the phone? No, nah, it wasn't over the phone. It was like in real life. We were playing spades. <laughs> 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 we were playing spades. I think me, my sister, uh, my mother, and my aunt. And, uh, it was a Ice Cube song. I was for some reason I'm like playing. I'm getting into the Spade game, so I'm like. Why were you playing Ice Cube? I wasn't playing. I, I wasn't playing Ice Cube, but I was singing Ice Cube songs in my head while we were playing Spades, and then I forgot that that was supposed to be in my head mm-hmm. and not out loud. I think I, I all I said was like "silly ho" or something like that. Mm. Mm. I said hoeing from my mother and that day. Did you mother, get smacked cross the I, I don't remember. I don't remember. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that tells you what happened. I, I remember saying silly hoe and then that's, mm. that's all I remember saying. Okay, go on say it again from your mama. See what mm-hmm. happened. You cuss on the show. It's my show. It's your show. It's my show. She don't listen. And I'm glad she listens. And I, she needs to know her son is an adult with an adult vocabulary. <laughs> I say some things. Your mother's also an English teacher. I don't censor things. You know what? They actually said that uh, people with higher intellects curse. Really? Yeah. I've seen that I've seen that article several times. I had to actually find it and post it on it and tweet it out or something. I'm going to have to see that. But I've heard that, that cursing is actually a sign of a higher intellect. I remember <sighs> one of my English teachers saying that you don't have a vast vocabulary. If you if... have to curse. No, sometimes it's the appropriate word. Sometimes there is no exclamation for what you want to say better than a curse word. Eh, probably. It's my personal opinion. I believe I'm going to be dropping a lot of F-bombs uh, tomorrow when this, uh, this game Wizards seven. Celtics. Oof. I'm Wiz nervous. I'm nervous. And the Celtics. I am so nervous. I Shout out to John Wall because Tammy was about to have a... She didn't even want to see those last four seconds of the no. game. And then John pulled up and that, that play wasn't even supposed to go to him. It was supposed to go to Bradley Bill, but Bradley Bill couldn't work himself open. So John said, man, hand me the ball, dog. I got this. Three points. Bang. I was scared. Bang, bang, bang. I was just trying to... Get my John with his spoon <laughs> in. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> I was just trying to avoid look at the TV. And when my love goes, bang, bang, bang. I'm just, I'm just going to be stressed out tomorrow. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to do yeah. it. I need that. I, I wish I could go. I, you know, I got to do the daddy thing. It'd be nice to go someplace and watch the game, though. Probably not in the cards. Not in the cards. Sacrifices I'll make. Unless you want to get a sitter. Uh, no, no, no. I'm not paying. We, we we end up paying more to have somebody watch, at least, than we do going to do the activity that we end up going to do. Like, it's just not worth it to me. 
and, and I love our babysitter. She's we awesome. We have a great babysitter. We have a great babysitter. It's just that I would rather save that for better, uh, bigger okay, occasions. Stuff that's really like husband and wife stuff. Like, And it's not that you're not into sports and you don't encourage me to, to watch the sports. And you're not just as into the game as I am. But that's not like a real like... Date? Date. Oh, you know? okay. Uh, that's just how I mean. That's fine. Know, that's fine with feel. me. That's perfectly fine with me. But yeah, game seven tomorrow. Go Wiz. Uh, man, I, th- I think that's where we're going to stop this episode. Okay. We're going we're gonna to close out the... The funky sexy. I think the lava lamp finally came to light. Started, yeah. Came to life. You know, the, the wax has melted. It looks all sweet in here. It's all, the lights are, da- are dim. It's just the glow of the laptop in the lava lamp. It's put me to sleep. You are now rocking with the flames. The flames. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but as always, uh, ctcharities.org. Uh, please go check out my man's website. Uh, donate whatever you can time money clothes books uh repost a retweet a share share with your friends you know whatever you can um he's, he's always doing great things in the community um let's let's just be aware that the situation in uh it flint is uh, is not over with um there's still i think we have several households that are being uh sued oh. for not paying their water bill or you know mm. because they were paying for tainted water so, I wouldn't pay either. Yeah, I wouldn't pay either. So we still have we still have a lot of issues going on in Flint, and I know that uh, Tavares and his organization are, are right there on the front lines, um, you know, trying to help those people in every way they can. So let's let's help Tavares do that good work. Uh, let's participate in any way we can, even if it's just uh, sharing the information with a friend. Uh, then we also have uh, CelebrityHairCorp.com for all your natural hair extension needs go grab your bundles you know as always it's uh free shipping and no tax uh-huh. yeah so you can uh you can rock up on some some natural hair bundles celebrityhaircorp.com big friend of the show big supporter of the show so let's uh you gonna buy the weave anyway you might as well buy it <laughs> <laughs> might as well buy it from my man i got the hookup I wanted to um, shout out my aunt because my aunt, oh yeah the jewelry yeah my yeah. aunt has a business now where she's selling um, bracelets. Hey, might I have can't... to put a, a picture of the bracelet up on our on our Twitter so people on the Instagram and everything so people can see. Yeah, the, she's on Instagram. Jewels of a Haver. Her name is Sonya Brown. And Spell she, a Haver for the people, Tim. A H A V is in Victor A. Okay. And um, she makes affordable bracelets that are comparable to well I don't want to say comparable but they would resemble a Pandora type bracelet so I have about seven gems on my bracelet one is for mom one is for one says run one is a tennis shoe because I you know go out and do my run walks one is um, a little medal for being number one mom you know so she can she personalizes the jewelry and I have a nice piece of jewelry, so I do want to share a picture of it. Yeah, I thought I thought see. that was a, a, a pretty dope bracelet. So yeah. Shout out to Aunt Sonya. Very, yeah. very, very, very nice. Very pretty. And then, uh, again, the music you've been listening to throughout this whole episode is brought to you by my brother-in-law, uh, Deuce Man. And you can find him on SoundCloud, uh, Deuce Man Productions. That's man with two N's. Deuce Man Productions. I think the name of this one that you listen to right now is uh fill up on it you know got my wife in the room had to play fill up on it you know? oh okay <laughs> that's how we do with the lava lamp with the lava lamp but again as always thank you for listening we really do appreciate it. i've seen a lot of growth um in this podcast in just a couple of months that we've been doing it i think that like i said the evening with flans is going to be a more consistent thing we may you know spin this off and make it its own thing uh, let us know if you like it if you want to hear more uh, we appreciate all your comments, all your listens, all your retweets, your shares. I don't know. I'm running out of My vocabulary isn't that big. I guess that's why I curse. <laughs> but anyway, uh, as always, uh, be the light. And uh, until the next time, peace. Peace.